Hey guys, it's James and I will be installing this Creality 4.27 silent board on my Ender 3. But before I get started with that, I'd like to mention that I do already have some upgrades on my Ender 3. I have a Micro Swiss direct drive with an all metal hot end. I also have a BL Touch with a pin 27 board. And this is important because depending on what type of pin 27 board you have, you may have switched the wires of the ground and voltage uh, according to the pin 27 board. So if your wires are switched when you're installing the board, you're going to fry your board. So don't do that. This is why I'm mentioning that I have upgraded my Ender 3 already with the BL Touch with the pin 27 board. Don't go by just the colors. Make sure you verify that your wires are actually, you know, the signal volts and the ground, those wires are correct. On the right, we have the original stock 1.1.4 board. It's an 8-bit board with a limited 128 kilobytes of flash memory. On the left, we have the 4.27 silent board. It has a 32-bit ARM processor and a 512 kilobyte flash memory. The TMC225 Trinamic stepper drivers are what makes the board silent. The motor, power, and stop terminals are pretty much in the same position. The terminal for the main fan was moved to accommodate the filament runout sensor terminal. The cables for the serial bus are different. If you want to make a direct connection to your printer, you are going to have to purchase an extra cable. The cable is not included. First, we'll start off with the disassembly. If you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe to this channel. Thanks. Unplug your power. Remove the three screws for the cover. Open up the cover. Remove the 27 pin board with the cable for the LCD screen and the BL touch. You need to separate the wires, so cut the zip ties. Remove this cable attached to the fan on the cover and get it out of the way. The hot glue on these connectors were easy to take out. These cables on the right for the motors are already labeled with the yellow tags. So you don't have to worry about them too much, just unplug them. I found the hot glue for these terminals to be very difficult to take out. It took me some time to get rid of all the hot glue. You're just going to have to... Use a screwdriver and your cutters to just get rid of these hot glue connections.
All these cables on the left side of the board have different color schemes. You're going to be able to distinguish them uh, by the different colors. So you don't have to worry about them too much. Uh, just take a photo of the board itself with the cables, how they're positioned. The only two cables that you really need to worry about are these, which is for the thermistors, the hot end thermistor and the bed thermistor. They're both in white. So I suggest you label that or actually just mark one of these cables. I was able to remove most of the excess glue. However, I was not able to get rid of all of it and was having difficulty removing the terminals. So I decided to remove the board from the printer. Remove the four screws attaching the board. I had to cut the last of the remaining glue for the terminals to come out. Take your time. This was a longer process than what was shown on the video. Now turn the screws counterclockwise and remove the rest of the cables from these green terminals. But before you do that, you might want to take a picture just in case you want to know which way the cables go. After you have disconnected the wires and removed the board from the printer, we can get started with the installation process. It's going to be very difficult to get that first cable that goes to the power supply installed unless you take out the board so don't try to do like a wire per wire transfer i found that to be very difficult just because of the small space you're working in this is the new 4.27 silent board all the terminals come closed so you want to open them if you turn the screws counterclockwise the terminals will open Use your two fingers to separate the rest of the cables from the power cable. Use your thumb to push the board toward the power cables. And then close the terminals. Make sure the cables are very secure on the terminals. You don't want to have to do this work twice. You can put the styrofoam pad that came with the board for support. You will find that some of these cables are frayed. If they are, just twist them and bundle the strands. The wires for the hot end are both red. It heats up the block by creating a short, so it does not matter in which direction you put the wires in. The polarity does not make a difference. Once your power connections are complete and secure, place the board back in the printer. These slots should align. Secure the board by placing these four screws.
add your motor connections. The terminals for the end stop switches, the thermistor sensors, and the fan can be added. So again, this is very important. Do not go just by the color of the wires. Make sure that you have the voltage going to the voltage, the signal going to the signal, and the ground going to the ground. Make sure these wires are correct. And again, this is dependent on the pin 27 board if you have it already installed. So I switched the wires back to the original state and it's not on the video. Make sure you check the wires and see where the wires are going in before you plug in your BL touch. Your connection is going to be a little loose. Best practice is to put some hot glue on the connection. Connect your LCD cable. So that's it guys for the hardware install of the 4.2.7 board. I'm going to have to add a part two to this video where I'm going to show you how to configure your firmware and add it to your printer. But for now, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. If you wanna use my settings um, or my firmware that I'm using, it's going to be for an Ender 3 with a BL Touch and a direct drive system. So if you have these installed on your printer, um, you're going to be able to use that firmware. But for now, I'm going to end this video and I will be adding some other configurations to my GitHub uh, repository. So look for that. Hope you guys got something out of this video. Go ahead and like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Thanks. Uh, so you're going to be able to download my firmware configuration. Just click on this download right here. I'll link this in the description below. And then you're going to save this in a micro SD card. Plug it into the, your printer and turn it on.